What's up, everybody? Welcome to a juicy new episode of Ricker and Bond. On today's episode, we're talking about TikTok being stewed by several states over the app's effects on kids' mental health, and OpenAI's competitor is filing for an IPO. We also got a big old bank pleading guilty for laundering money for freaking fentanyl sales. Super juicy. Also, might hit a Tesla Robotaxi, a former NBA player f- founding a college NIL loan firm, basically. And uh, which sector has the most stressed out manager as reported by the workers? It's Ricker, it's Bond, it's the time to go. Let's go. Bond Jen, what's going on? How's the day? I'm in Los Angeles. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Never left. Never. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I'm here. What is there a weekend song called uh Take Me Back to LA or no? I think it's Escape from LA. Yeah, but I saw, you know, on on the Ricker and Bond Instagram, it's tapped into Weekend Fangram. Uh-huh. Uh, and someone said there's a Take Me Back to LA, but I know Escape from LA and and I just discovered a Take Me Back that was from Icon or whatever it's called. Take me back. And all of these. Oh, you mean the idol? Yeah. Oh, maybe. Little weekend nerds are like, oh, we want the reverby ad libs from the live version of the Brazil tour concert on Timeless. And it sounds the same. And it also sounds bad. They're like, oh, we like reverb. Yeah, you should have been alive during Chopped and Screwed, nerds. Bruh, you should hear all the kids on the weekend Reddit. Like, oh man, I just found this trilogy shit. This guy is awesome. <laughs> oh, is like so I just cool. heard blinding lights and I was like, whoa, <laughs> but he was so much more stuff. Have you heard about this? That is true. What is that like for an analogy? Rick and Bond, what's going on? Um if we found like I guess Prince or something. Michael Jackson. I was Eminem, maybe. Sure. I like because I was in an Eminem in like sixth grade. Yeah. Which was like 2006? I forget what year it was, but I, I really bumped... Everybody hated this album from him, but I, I bumped Relapse a lot. Mm-hmm. Him on the street, and boy, that was my treadmill soundtrack. But I didn't bump yes. freaking any other Eminem, but yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, because I think he was... When did he get popular? Like 95, which is when I was born. Couple 90s, couple 90s. So someone... When did Abel get famous? Like 2010. So someone... I was born in 2010 is 14 now so i could see them like i mean traversing my first weekend was i guess starboy era Damn. Or, uh, the uh what's the the hills was the that hills? my first beauty weekend. behind the madness yeah. i was a little before that but fuck i always gotta start it off with days. some weekend man i was going through trilogy it's really it's weekend era it's weekend season right now and you yes. gotta go through the albums I wonder how many times I missed the opportunity to find him earlier because I was like big into Tumblr. He was like big on that platform or like people listen to him a lot. They put their his music in their blogs and shit. Character will die, dude. Yeah. Last season of the, of the weekend. Oh, or so he says. Right, right. You still not so. timeless yet? Are we, are we on it? Nah, nah. Oh, I haven't. Goodness. That's I haven't given absurd. it a listen. Since. That's absurd. Really? You don't just hear it as like a nice rap song. Not only that, I don't even think it's just me that isn't feeling it because I feel like usually new weekend songs are on the charts for a couple of weeks. Everybody like kind of hates those two songs. Yeah, sure. like the last one he put out. Um, first of all, we should just make a fucking weekend podcast. No, dude, it's <laughs> this. We do a we do one freaking sector, one section, Ricker and Bond on the weekend. Maybe we should see what happens if we do weekend branding but i don't care that much um it probably blew up because <laughs> uh, there's no weekend podcasts or so that i know about but anyway um what's my fucking talk we'll about? do it quickly through anchor if spotify didn't freaking act acquire everything and have just the most horror. i know i said it but the worst analytics platform for a podcast i've ever seen yeah but like then after he drops his album like what are we going to talk about exactly that's why that's why we do it in the beginning of this and then somehow people uh, you know i'll try to seo the heck out of it but it'll be like yeah there's this weird freaking business podcast and but, but at the beginning 
they just talk about the weekend for like 20 minutes. It's kind of weird. Yeah. The weekend. Um, I was going to say something about Timeless that. is amazing. People not liking it on the charts. Oh, yeah. It like fell like super far on the charts. It's as really as good. Did, uh, the other one. It's but really yeah, good. I don't know. Um, drop the album, please. Or... I am sick of not having an album out. I kind of, he is kind of making me listen to his other stuff right now, which is probably what rollouts. Mm. But uh, yeah, I would enjoy just a, a cold release. He's just waiting for that Diddy list to drop so that he can be sure that he's not on it. I also remembered as I was scrolling, it popped up that the feature Mr. Puff Daddy was on with The Weeknd was a uh, Creepin' remix, was it? Yes, correct. Creepin'? That's very funny. I, I'll, I'll post this on the Instagram, but <laughs> there was a YouTube short of all the little clips of people having Diddy lines. And there's like Weekend, Old 50. There's, a, I forget who else, but that Old 50, ooh, boy. There's some Eminem in there that's doing a little Diddy subliminal. It's not very subliminal, but uh, I'll post that. It's funny. Should we talk about Kevin Hart closing all of his restaurants overnight? What? Yeah, Hart House. The uh, Kevin Hart funded and um, what's the word? Promoted fast food chain that only served meat. I mean, only served vegan options. Um, Hart House, which was in there was one in Hollywood, there was one in, uh, in USC. And then there were like two more somewhere and he closed them all like overnight. Some were speculating that it's because uh, he hosted a couple of Diddy parties. And, you know, if he fucking if he if that goes, if he gets involved with all that shit, like legally, then it's going to look bad for the brand. So, you know, might as well just whatever. But or maybe they were just bleeding money. I don't fucking know. L.A. County, Westchester, Monrovia, University Park and Hollywood. Sorry to those of you who like heard the intro and was like, "Fuck yeah, they're talking about TikTok getting sued." And okay, we'll do it. I mean, there's it's we, called a cold open. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're That's right. That's not a cold open. I, I get. I said the anything. Intro. The cold opens only happen if there's nothing before it. Uh, I think so. Mm, okay, so this is a like a start and a stop. We'll go. Okay, TikTok. What's going on with TikTok? Everybody's getting sued. Mental health, dude. Can I list you the the states that are suing TikTok, and then you can talk mm-hmm. about it? Yeah. We got New York, California, the District of Columbia, Florida, Massachusetts, Minnesota, New Jersey, Tennessee, Kentucky, Nebraska, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Utah, and Vermont are all suing TikTok over kids' mental health on Gen. Yeah, so these states are alleging that TikTok's algorithm is addictive which it is and is especially harmful to teens because teens can't recognize that they are being addicted to something but here's how this is going to go um tiktok is going to lose a suit and or settle um they're going to be slapped with a fine and then they're going to make the same money back in terms of fucking ad revenue in the same day so it's really not gonna do anything unless there is some sort of law that is passed that prevents tiktok from doing what they're doing and i think meta should also be sued too for this by the way well of, um, co- of course all social media platforms and you know might be a little different with tiktok stuff because the the chinese social apps are always a little different they always feel like like a fake casino mm-hmm. it was like you're in like a north korea and it's like a little bit fake um, yeah but obviously instagram youtube shorts all those short term short form content stuff is getting people addicted to scrolling like they've always been but in more short form content which means yeah the span's going hella hella down but i mean this is one that's not owned by the u.s so it's a little not in favor of the the states such a such a an effective propaganda tool <laughs> you know and i don't know if you've heard about this new tech called ai <laughs> Um, just to sidetrack just a little bit, but I'll, I'll get back. Meta just released, um, they didn't release it, but they announced their new product, air quotes, called uh, Meta Movie Gen, which is AI text to video, um, pretty similar to OpenAI Sora, except the difference here is um, 
they like released a paper with all the research. So Meta and the and the AI fucking race is probably the most open company out right now in terms of transparency, which is surprising. Um, so like, what does that have to do with TikTok? Well, this 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 product, Meta Movie Gen or Sora, isn't um, available to the public yet. I don't know if it'll ever be, but um, it'll be really easy to make fake TikToks with whatever you want. Make spin up a bunch of accounts and just toss out propaganda and control some sort of narrative, you know? And with AI doing all the work and bots and shit, like someone smart enough could like spin up thousands of accounts per day and like wreak havoc on the minds of young people and unsuspecting people. Just Russia getting a, a nice leverage for content creation. Bruh, like <laughs> instead of hella bots, just hella video. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Some I have seen some AI tools coming out, um, some video tools, but they're not as good as Sora and OpenAI. So I wonder what they will be used for. Also, um, it would be really scary to be working at a studio right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the fuck? Like I drive past Warner Brothers and fucking um. What else is in Burbank? All those fucking studios out there. And I'm just like, bro, these mythical. are going to be Amazon. Yeah, these are fucking mythical. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I'm like, bro, these are going to be Amazon warehouses. And I'm like, if not this decade, then the next decade. Because the price of making a movie is going to be so cheap. And after a fucking Joker 2 fucking bombed last weekend, um, I, I bet. That was the last studio, weekend it came out? I think so. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think it did like twenty million and like spent two fifty million to make it. Like it might have been one fifty, something like that. But that's a pretty big blow to a company that's already billions of dollars in debt. So uh making AI movies might be something to look into or I'm sure they're thinking of. Mr. Perry also already saw that trend a couple months ago. Yeah, and wasn't there a studio who was it? I don't know, but they did some sort of deal with, I think, OpenAI to license their library of movies to train AI. Um, and so I obviously, was a, yeah, that brings a up kid in shit. film school right now. I would for sure be taking like a minor in whatever coding or whatever, but just all this, the, my production company that I would spin up would be ridiculous. I'm not yeah. really into that, so I wouldn't really do it now, but I mean, kind of in the business of it but not really definitely um that's kind of like i think about that i'm like yeah that's the smart thing to do but you also have like two majors that like will just be taken by ai like you have coding and you have fucking movie making yeah but i like because like i'm learning coding right now but yeah. i'm still always like bro what is this going to look like in 20 years when I'm 49, which like is old, but not super old. Like I could, I could live to a hundred, like the coding aspect of it, the coding aspect. Cause I know it's going to be like way different. different. Like I'm just probably not talk. needed to learn anything, but yeah, I'm just going to like talk and think and it's just going to be made. Yeah. But, but whatever I'm saying, if I was a film kid right now, the schemes and, and entrepreneurship of, of being film people just, Make as much as IP, probably a lot of IP, a lot of uh, maybe like one level removed of cats making AI production studios and like a, a white label of it, perhaps. Yeah, um, SaaS is definitely going to software as a service is going to play a huge part in this. Um, sure. All the e-commerce stuff is going to be content production studios, which is kind of it is now, but. A lot of cats making content stuff. Um, anything else on TikTok? Um, I was going to say, this is pretty fractured at this point, but there's probably something in whatever they're suing for that is like, you can do what you do if we get like the code in it to make sure that we get all the data or something. Yeah, maybe they have like, oh, like use your pl platform, but like use our algorithm or yeah, fucking whatever. But of course, TikTok would argue that the algorithm is where the money is, you know. 14 attorney generals, 13 states, and D.C. <laughs> Freaking D.C. Yeah. Um, 
TD Bank. You ever heard of it? Yes. It's a bank. It's not TD Ameritrade. It's a associated, but not the same thing. TD Bank agreed to pay over $3 billion in penalties for violating U.S. anti-money laundering laws. What were they laundering, Bonjen, you ask me? What? Over $400 million in illegal transactions, including money from fentanyl sales. Whoa, that's serious. It'd be your own bank sometimes, as a comment said on one of the Instagram posts I saw that was hilarious. So, uh, did anyone go to jail? Unsure. Um, TD Bank admitted to the money laundering. Uh, they have an asset cap now, which limits the ability to expand uh, U.S. growth. Um, employees ignored compliant issues. For years, people say, with authorities accusing the bank of prioritizing profits over regulations. How dare a company? How do dare they? Them? Who would ever think to do Never that? Never before seen Rockefeller, Vanderbilt. <laughs> Jesus. And every company ever. <laughs> Literally what every company uh, uses 25% of their money to buy lawyers for. Mm-hmm. The fallout includes fines from multiple U.S. agencies and four years of independent Monitoring TD Bank stock fell nearly 5%. Tis but a scratch following the announcement, and the CEO will step down in 2025. The bank set aside $3 billion for the settlement as an investing heavily in improving compliance programs. You thought crypto was dirty, doggy? Oh, man. Nothing been dirtier for longer than the good old U.S. banks, baby. For fat. That's probably not the biggest part of the uh, the story, but you put a nice little fentanyl in there, it gives a nice headline. Someone is making stupid money off of fentanyl. <laughs> it's kind of China and also Mexico, but dude, there's also ads on it now. You see ads on fentanyl, it's like, oh, fentanyl is bad. It's definitely becoming more um, visible in the media yeah. than previously. Um, I think also because the situation at the border is like quadrupled in terms of like volume. Um, so that could have something to do with it too. But a lot of people dying from fent. Sure. You know, more people do coke than you thought you think. And is the high even that good? Um, no, I was you wondering die, this you, the you other die day. immediately. Exactly. Like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what kind it's of so market? good you don't wake up. <laughs> what kind of marketing was like? Yo, dude, I mean, I guess you cut it and stuff from the on the manufacturing side, but boy, from the consumer side, not very, not very uh, enticing. I want to think so, like the only like, let's say like I manufacture cocaine, like I have that fucking business. Am I putting fentanyl in it to make it more addictive? Like, no, you do it like I would think you would do it to like. So that you save coke for like more batches, sure. right? But it is but, I think it's also hella more addictive. Well, no, like any amount can kill you, you know. But isn't it addicting? No, it's not addicting because you die. Well, I think it's a little bit addicting. Hold well, on. you know. Yes. The cocaine is the addicting part. Yeah. Sure. But I, it is like sure. it's like i don't know like i don't know i could be wrong because it's it's main use is for uh cancer patients but i don't know like when it's oh. used for that it's not like addicting i just think it's used for treatment it all started when little peep died he died off didn't he die off that no or no i believe so that's what that was the timeline dude yeah dude jesus christ now you see the the trick is just to make sure that your friends consume it first so that you don't well, get the i mean how long is the death after a couple of freaking minutes or what I'm from my understanding, it's like if you do a bump right now and there's some fit in there, you're gonna like you immediately die. My goodness, yeah, like because that's what it usually said. Like, fucking Mac Miller, for example, he went to his room to do a bump and then died in his room, overdosed in his room, and there was fentanyl in his. And we're made, we're made to believe that hella amount of this powder freaking saves money for cocaine. That's so that's my question. So like are they just putting it in there to kill people like maliciously or are they actually just trying to save money? I mean it seems more of a maybe they put uh, like 
Maybe they don't even put a pinch. Maybe they like get half a scoop of fent and half a scoop of shit and just mix it up. And they're like, whoever gets it gets it. Just really, really a malpractice of cutting. Or maybe it's not even coke. Maybe it's just a scoop of fent, and then they just sell it like that. There's a, a lot of good fentanyl content on YouTube. No channel five and all that. Yeah, but so it you seems, do it seems to be more of a, a chaos agent than anything else. If I was to put some categorization on it. Because it's not like definitely roulette. It's not a. I don't think it's a money saving thing. If it really does come through a, a couple overseas entities through Mexico, just to cause havoc in the streets. I don't even. I mean, that's some. That's a joker havoc right there. Just to kill people to kill people. I mean, yeah. I mean, make some homeless people or just. I don't know. I feel like they would try to save money. Sure, it seems you know? to go all back to that, isn't it? Incredibly cheap as well. Fentanyl? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how much it is. On the next episode, of Rigor. Let me ask my. Let me ask my supplier. Yeah, <laughs> deep dive in fentanyl. Ten years later, after the peep, man, peep, peep, peep. Ricker and Bond documentary special: Fentanyl <laughs> on our streets. It's the one hour special. You know Channel Five, right? The Channel uh, 5 YouTube channel. No, sir. Oh, really? No. Uh, like, really acne-ridden white dude with the curly hair that started off doing documentaries. He's talking about people in, like, um, Section 5 housing. Oh, no. You ever seen that? mm Well, he has a... Uh... I'm only allowed to watch YouTube on weekends. <laughs> he does legit some good, fun YouTube content. Some of his last stuff was Mexico City Gentrification, Pennsylvania Bigfoot Conference, Tel Aviv protests. Uh, City. I think actually one of those videos popped up on my feed today. And yeah. I was like, oh, that looks interesting, but I didn't click it. Yeah. Uh, Planned Parenthood, abortion list, some pretty fun stuff. It's basically like Vice when Vice was doing fun stuff. I remember when Vice was cool. I remember they sent their whitest reporters to the hood. That is <laughs> that. It's literally that. <laughs> to report on black people like they were animals in the zoo. That's what they, that's, uh, he does it a little bit better, but. <laughs> It's still like we are, and he, it's like a, it's half making fun of it, but it's still for sure like, yo, we are with spets, specimens on freaking five block right now. Anyway. The fucking skinny, tall white guy is like, they've accepted me as one of their own. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. sitting in a studio while they're fucking rapping. Apparently, his oldest video is only three years ago. Andrew Callahan. Um, and now he, he already has over 20 million. Uh, 20 million. We're talking about 2 million subscribers. Uh, That's a lot. Yeah. And then uh, we're today's talking... YouTube. If you definitely grind it out, I think you can hit a million in a year. If you yeah, do the right kind of quality stuff, little 20, 20 minute vids. He's averaging around 700K, 800K per vid. I mean, no, he's probably averaging 1 mil could see on some sites but quality stuff you really got to produce a television show to succeed on youtube these days you do you do yeah. you need some ad breaks you need some uh you know good you stuff a writer an editor and like he... someone to fucking my friend was like dude i can't believe mr beast fucking pay someone to make his thumbnails i'm like dude that's the most important job of all of mr beast productions because if nobody clicks the video then no nothing happens this is no true. one makes money. Like they probably get paid the most. Got to make quality content. I would pay them the most. <laughs> a, what's what's Jimmy up to? There was a Hormozy clip, and he was just he was at some room and talking to twenty two year olds who think they're running the world. And this kid was like, uh, "I basically mastered YouTube, but my whole thing is, I don't do I don't do long form. I just I post like thirty. 30 vid a day Ramones, he's like how uh, what's your uh, what kind of stats you got what do you watch how many people are subscribed and uh, how many how many views you get he's like yeah i got like i don't have a lot of subscribers but i get like 10k views per video and he's like you haven't mastered youtube <laughs> uh yeah, make your stuff cool. better and then you know you'll have more money that's super cute <laughs> what is this 2018 Dude, 
It's 2018. Shit. Yeah, a little bit. What is this? 20, 2009? Yeah. <laughs> God damn, bro. Kids want to make money, Bon Jen. Dude, I don't blame them, bro. It's tough out there. That's what these kids in college, these athletes, you think athletes deserve to be paid, Bon Jen? Is this one of the essays you wrote in high school? Did I? I don't know. Um, you never I had that little that, debate? I, th- I, yeah, I think they deserve to be paid question. if they're in video games and shit. Solid take. And fucking uh, jerseys. So, there's a thing called NIL. Do you know what NIL is? Mm, hockey? And I. <laughs> NIL uh, is how players get paid. It's the name, image, and likeness that college oh. players uh, are now associated in the NCAA. And they can get paid off of their name, image, and likeness. So if they are in video games, you're number 21. You got Ricker on the back of your shirt, and you make a lot of money with uh, you can do brand deals and et cetera, et cetera. There is a company. That was co-founded by a former NBA player, Kendrick Perkins. Big Perk. Big Kendrick. I, feel, I think he was a big baby, his name might have been. He was on OKC, and et cetera, et cetera. He founded a company called Nilly. It's a company that offers college athletes upfront cash in exchange for a portion of their name, image, and likeness earnings. Ooh. I repeat, this is a company that gives cash advances to 18-year-olds, we're talking from 25000 to hundreds of thousands of dollars in advance in return for 10 to 50% of their NIL earnings for up to seven years. Seven years. A kid's in college, maybe two to three years. So, like, if they go to the NBA, does it, do they still get... It's probably... Either they get completely boned, like a th- it's basically could be three six. I haven't read the contracts, but it sounds like three sixty deals in record label uh, format of you give you give an advance and you got freaking debt for the rest of your life if you don't make it back. Uh, but this is like return of the earnings. Nil. So, earnings, it says specifically, so it might just be brand deals, et cetera, et cetera. You get from when you're in college. And maybe you got a good lawyer where it only says these are brand deals I made in my two to three years when I was in Alabama football and the rest in the NFL don't count as NIL. But, uh, you know, it, it sounds like a good old record deal that uh, the, the kings of old did back in Hollywood. So uh, my question here is like, so if you have a, if you have a record deal, presumably the money given to you would be used to like promote your music and like build your image and pay for recording time. If you are um, like, if you're just a regular company, presumably you would use that money to grow, right? Marketing, hiring people. If you do this, if you're an athlete, I would think, okay, maybe they use that money for tuition, but tuition's probably already free. So, like, would they just like spend it on fucking whatever, which is fine. But like, is 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 the company investing in the growth of the student at all? I don't know how a hundred thousand dollars correlates to a uh, young man trying to grow their brand as a college athlete. Yeah, like, are they fucking <laughs> buying Instagram ads for them or like? Like, I don't know, give putting them in the best gym in the world. Like, it I don't, is I don't a, fucking know. a ridiculous high interest loan, it would seem like. It seems that, a little uh, predatory to me. Oh, oh, there's critics that argue it's a uh, does prey on financially vulnerable athletes while the company claims it's providing financial security through a licensing deal, not a loan. Um, newly contracts require athletes to make monthly social media posts and public appearances. Well, Nilly assumes no obligation to help athletes find endorsements. It sounds like something I tried to do like one year out of college for kids. <laughs> you did? I mean, you know, Rick, I didn't try to start a record label. <laughs> oh. Well, I, I don't know. It's not like we didn't like if we had someone under like a label, it's not like we wouldn't try to find them work. That was like, right. <laughs> you know. uh, Nilly has signed 
contract with 20 athletes offering an upfront 50000 for a 25% share of one player's NIL earnings over seven years with a maximum payout of $125,000. Oh, maximum payout? Maximum payout, $125,000. So what does that mean? Like... That like Nilly gets one hundred twenty five thousand dollars, the max. So like, if I'm an athlete and I make a million dollar check, they wouldn't get two hundred fifty thousand. They'd only get one hundred fifty. So ESPN obtained a copy of one Nilly contract that lays out a fifty thousand dollar payment to a high school senior. Oh my god! Oh boy, bro, my Let's boy Nick Saban quit being a coach of Alabama, and I kind of get why. He said he hated all the NIL stuff, but boy, yeah. Okay, so ESPN got a contract, $50,000 payment to a high school in exchange for exclusive rights to sell his name, image, and likeness for seven years. So you obtain rights to their NIL, their name, image, and likeness. Um, Nilly and its investors would love to see who's investing. <laughs> well, oh, I just got it. Nilly, NIL. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my God. We'll receive a 25% cut at the player's NIL earnings for the length of the contract uh, or until Nilly earns a total of $125,000, which is two and a half times its initial investment, whichever comes first. Okay. Well, NIL okay, money. So, Go. So once they earn that, the contract's over? Uh, in that contract, we'll receive 25% of the cut until the length of the contract is over. Or until Nilly earns one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So I do like that. I do like that because yeah. that's like, let's say someone blows up, and let's let's say they're not even good on fucking. They're not even good at sports, but yeah. they just make fucking funny TikToks, and they're right. blowing up, and then they happen to play football too. Yeah, and Nilly's getting a cut of that, and then they, you know, you can you can finish that contract in like four or five brand deals, like super lucrative brand deals, and then just say fuck them you know do that in a couple of years it would be but, interesting to see the the average brand deal of people but you know fifty thousand is kind of low but it's not low to a high school senior i mean fifty thousand is low for like a pop and tiktoker but it's not low to a high school senior with no social media presence yeah it seems pretty weird i mean it's it's freaking private loans and licensing out people's names for a cut of their deal um, you know, you could easily see how it could go bad, but yeah, I mean, it's not like he's taking on a hundred thousand dollar loan that he can't declare bankruptcy from to go to a school that he might not graduate from that study something that he might not even like. It certainly sit that is true. It certainly seems a little toppy. It seems like uh, is society just old people just scamming young people? <laughs> I mean loans <laughs> is that is that what we're doing right now why a lot of people don't like loans and when the loans get a, a little a little loose it's usually a, a, a sign of things like this is it's usually you see uh when things get a little hairy don't you just love getting a check and then like a giant chunk of that is like taken for social security and you're like oh good i'm just funding the least productive members of society right now right yeah. now Cat stuff. We don't. I'll do a deep dive on social security, but that joint is almost. They're like funding is almost gone. <laughs> yeah, they're about to fucking uh, run out. <laughs> yeah, nil money that Nilly takes from an athlete can be as high as fifty percent, and the spokesperson said Nilly's shares can be as low as ten percent. Off topic, but in those glasses, you really look like your name should be Glenn. Glenn, these are <laughs> a little bit of prescription. They are. They were basically upsold to me. I went into an eye doctor, and they were upsold to me uh, for the classic blue light. Oh, which nice. Probably still. Homie sold it to me like, yo, we're not really sure if it works, but it's definitely not bad. And if it does work, that's good. But I kind of use it now just to block. If I have a fan going on, I don't want dust in my face. And it, it does. It's a little bit prescription, so I can see a little bigger. Can you say hi? My name is Glenn real quick. John, how are we doing, man? John, can I call you John? Yes. John, if I told you I had an investment that can get you up to 10, maybe up to 
two and a half, <laughs> maybe one and a half, two and a half percent of, of your initial investment, would you be interested, John? One and a half to a four. Uh, sure. Let's sure. hear it. Now, John, I'm Glenn, right? There's hey, Glenn. this company called Nilly. Now, have you heard of name, likeness, and whatever the I was? Uh, yes. Image. Did you know yes. about Image? Yes. Yeah, we all know about Image. John, you know me. I'm Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what I would do as a broker. Damn. Thanks, Glenn. No problem, dude. I'm just I'll I'm take two. to get you. <laughs> I'll take two. Can I sign you up for five? Hey, that's actually like, so what if you like broker athletes for that <laughs> you know what if you're just like fucking um you're in high school yeah you play fucking football yeah you take a fifty thousand dollars from millie <laughs> and just go to crypto <laughs> you're just like you know what dude i don't give a fuck about football i don't want to be famous at all and you just enjoy the money yeah and, and you work at trader yeah. joe's do you yeah oh i mean well, fuck that yeah you don't just get it well, I mean, like, about Nilly this, or for football, I'm talking Nilly, like Nilly pays a kid and they're like, you know, fuck football. I just want to play video games. My name, image and likeness, my brand will essentially be worth zero. And Nilly never gets their money back. One of their spokesperson says in this article, there's no interest rate. There's no requirement to pay back. It's purely a licensing deal. I'd be surprised if those people that thought music advances were high interest loans. Of course they are. Uh, Ricardi and the Nilly's deals are not loans, but licensing agreements. If an athlete doesn't earn enough NIL money within the contracted time frame for Nilly to recoup its investment, he or she is not responsible to pay back any part of the upfront money. Ricardi compared these deals to advances musicians get. But musicians have to pay it back, right? I, I It's always assumed that they did. There's You, you just get $50,000. And if you don't make enough money, you nothing happens. Well, also think about it this way. You invest in a company and they go to zero. You don't get your money back. A player who accepts from Nilly, as we have to take a pause in one minute and 30 seconds, is required to fulfill several minimum commitments throughout their lifetime of the deal. Um, responsible for making at least one social post across his accounts per month, autographing up to 10 items per year and making himself available for at least one public appearance per year. The contract also states that the athlete must commit to best efforts to keep his social. So it's it's a social media loan, <laughs> which yeah, but. Mm. Uh, okay. Question. Let's yeah. say you get the fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. How much will that grow in the S and P five hundred in seven years? And so you, you immediately seven. Put, yeah, you immediately put in the S and P five hundred. Probably like ten to thirteen. Ten to thirteen. Yeah. Per percent. Yeah. Or, okay. Um. So you do that, and then you just pretend like you don't have it, and then you just give up twenty five percent of your money. I guess I don't know. It'd be hard to like figure this out because it depends like how famous the person gets. But if they're like not super famous, like just find an could, investment could be yeah, it could be like a good. Like, you need a two and a half start. times it, but. It's kind of a lot, but like if you it. put it in today and like just fucking spy or some shit. I, th I think we found a new business. Fuck. I got some cousins. <laughs> you got cousins and I got like 13% in the spy, my guy. Yes. Over a couple years, you know, if there's some good years, I can recoup that 50K pretty easy. Pretty you easy. You got cousins too? I do, but uh, they're older. I do have some younger ones. One's a pilot, one's a teacher. And oh. uh, I, I will say, you know, big news uh, for the whites. The first time in 22 years, there was a white cornerback in the NFL. That's the defensive position uh, that covers wide receivers who catch the ball. So it's the defensive wide receiver for those who don't follow the NIFL, American football. First time in 22 years, got an interception. The whites are back, baby. Dude, I was getting worried because they were starting to lose their luster, but it looks like they're they're sliding back. We're back, man. You know, I never, <laughs> I, I I haven't lost faith. I think you guys will regain. Dude, you know, you can never bet against the whites. Yeah, you know, there's they, so many. You got slobs. You got freaking Italians. Strong track record. Strong track record. Strong track record. We got the uh, the pedigree, and 
we got we got the swag. <laughs> We're getting swag. Oh We're man, the wax. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're just going off your amazing energy. <laughs> you know, you put out the energy, we just get it back, man. And, hey. uh, you know, work together. Why not? We can work together. We this can work guy, together. Uh, you know? the, the, <laughs> shout out the Instagram page, Football Forever, for having a, just what might be the best thing I've ever seen on Instagram <laughs> of a, a really well-made post that says first white cornerback with an interception in 22 years it is funny that this cornerback decided to have long sleeves so you can't really tell he's white that's that's his trick oh shit he said fuck color let's just play ball <laughs> and then here comes the media trying to bring race back into everything classic you can see his legs a little bit though you can see the caucasian and you can see the fucking black guy just trying to rip his fucking head off. So yeah, <laughs> you can, hell no, you can this see is there's ours. a weird excitement from his teammates. There's like this weird, like, why are they so the white man? His name's Riley Moss. He's a Bronco, Denver Bronco. I might cop his jersey just to rep the gang, rep the rep the squad. The white. Hey, look, uh, Donald Trump commented, "Big news for our country. <laughs> Thank you, young man, for doing the good work." This is exactly <laughs> what I've been saying. <laughs> he hey, gets it, dude. He gets it. Hey, he... he's from Des Moines, Iowa. Riley Moss, dude. Riley Moss bringing the whites back one interception at a time. The whites are back. Thank the, the whites are back. Put it on the, the, the headline of New York Times. You know, I think Monday is. Um... Other places, it's Columbus Day. In LA, it's Dig Indigenous Peoples Day. Digi this Day. Year's Mego, this I like year's to call it White Day. <laughs> I call it Digi Day. That's uh, you know, as a as a good white, I call it Digi Day. It's a good white Digi Day. I'm one of the good ones. Hey, as long as I got work off, like <laughs> <laughs> call it whatever you want. <laughs> Unpaid. <laughs> Unpaid. Call it account. fucking. Call it fucking Putin Day for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> there was also an Instagram of the headline with uh, just a bunch of raucous comments that uh, said the Kremlin said Trump gave uh, Putin a COVID test during COVID. And I commented, bro's weird, because it was kind of weird. And then there were some yeah. other comments that were like, who cares? Objectively COVID. weird thing to do. What a weird time. Jesus. We Social media makes it even lot. more weird, dude. You ever say, like, oh, before the pandemic? Or, like, in the pandemic times, you know, during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that, like, the new BCAD or, like, modern times? Yeah, I mean, it was Crazy. basically, like, the version of, I'm sure people that were in a world war said, like, before the world war, after the world war. My kids are gonna be like, "Tell us about the pandemic." I'm, be, I'm literally gonna be like, "It wasn't that bad." <laughs> <laughs> like it was like fucking overblown. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, it was a global thing. Uh, it was a global thing. Freaking, they shut the NBA down, dude. I there was a something similar with I forget what it was. I wish it. Uh, dang it, I forget. But it might have been a sports thing that shut down. Yeah, like one of the Florida teams shut down because of the hurricane. And they were like, oh, dude, when the sports team shut down, that's how you know it's real. And the Lakers right. dropped a, game, a game versus the Clippers, I believe it was, actually. Uh, once that, that NBA stops, you know, something's going hard. The Lakers stopped a game because of the hurricane? During the COVID. <laughs> I was like, what? Why the fuck do they care? <laughs> uh, such a, another such really good end. What, again, why am I, I think... When people ask me my all-time favorite movies, one is The Giver. I don't know if I've even seen the movie, but I really like the book, and that's the only one I can remember. And Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. Gems. You really like Uncut Gems. It's, I mean, what else am I going to like? <laughs> what other movie am I going to like? There's lots of other movies out there. I, I like though. Doctor Strange. It's yeah. I, but I wouldn't put it. that on my top. It's Uncut Gems and The Giver. <laughs> Uncut chips. Have you ever seen Bad Boys 4? Speaking of real no. cinematography. No, I haven't. <laughs> it, it's uh, is that a joke? Shot real, or is, or no, I'm not. Good? I'm just bringing it up because it's shot really weird. It's like they can't keep the camera still for fucking. And every shot looks like 
it took like a whole day to set up, but and it was really fast and like it's it's fine. It's like an okay movie, but I'm just like, dude, is every bad boys movie like this? Because I've only seen that one. I'm just like, bro, like keep the fucking camera still. You don't gotta zoom and pan for everything. If you're not using arrows, sorry about that. I'm queuing up a uncut gems clip, which was a meme. The uh, to set the meme, it was when Californians see that the hurricane might try to see where the hurricane falls and this was the audio that they used so look let's fucking bet on this one of the best movies i like okay. betting adam sandler's funny the cinematography is like basically like trilogy in a movie Mm -hmm. for the weekend gotta bring it the weekend i know 54 percent of our audience only come for the weekend at the beginning 20 minutes and it only happens every two years he, he was pretty consistent with the every two years an album drops yeah i like that was yeah it was after it was, every, was pretty much fm was every two years every two yeah speaking of fucking counts. drops huh melancholy counts one of his best records yeah, definitely. Because oh. it was fucking um it was fucking um... I don't really know. That that's a great album. That's fucking oh. trilogy fucking oh. What'd you yeah. look at? My name's Glenn. Uh, what do you <laughs> what do you think I'll fuck with anything? Melancholy bro? Yeah, I didn't. Really? Yeah. No way. I Did you it. back in the day when it when it came out? I've always loved it, yeah. Oh, look at that. I saw it live when he was fucking crying on stage, dude. I was rolling. <laughs> we were both fucking. He was singing. I feel like you ever see one of those fucking like scenes and like fucking, I don't know, American Dad or whatever, where like you see like like a subject or someone sees a subject and everything else just like disappears <laughs> and it's just black. It's just like me and I'm just listening to him. Like, and it was just that for an hour and a half. He posted a, a story on Instagram of he reposted someone of him sneezing at one of the i think did he do more than the brazil concert um i think he did australia oh no like, he did um was any videotaped it was only brazil that was the only one that was streamed he did Maybe. i think two in australia and then he did the fucking um i Heart radio festival which was like for a fucking i Heart radio festival his set was really elaborate it was like fucking brazil like level someone captured him sneezing and then he said lol fighting for my life which also goes pretty good with the freaking character did you see that video of someone rushing him on stage no was it cool it was just it was this fucking guy i think it was in australia someone rushing him on the catwalk and he's like gearing up for impact and he's kind of like smiling like he's nervous yeah but the guy just like gave him a hug but i'm just like bro like bro could have just been stabbed that is true yeah, it's like the only thing I thought was useless, worthless security, mm. like like fucking horrible security. Yeah, you got to be on it. I would be livid. I would be so pissed. I was like, bruh, like anyone can just run up here and sh shoot me in the face. Messy security is always good. Horrible, but does in this weekend have more Instagram followers than Messi? Probably not. Doubt it. Um, we should talk about this though. It wasn't on the schedule. Uh, it is being reported allegedly that Apple will skip um a couple years in between phones. I first of all, Messi versus weekend fifty seven five oh four in favor of Messi. Um Apple oh. skipping a few years for the re up, eh? I think that's a good idea intuitively as someone who has both as a user and as an analyst scene that people change every four years, but I'm not sure on the bottom line how that looks. You think they'll make more money? I don't know. But it, to me, like I said, I don't know the bottom line of it, but it seems like an okay idea. I don't know how much yeah. money you lose every year, but people aren't switching every year. Because I was using the new one. My homie has it. And... Yeah. This is like the first time I've used like an Apple feature and I'm just like, dude, this just doesn't feel like it just works. Like it just doesn't feel intuitive. Like if I don't, and I'm talking about the camera switching thing at the top. Oh, that? Like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, dude, because that as of my knowledge is like one of the only main features that they announced that's actually out right now. Yeah. Um, 
I'm just like, dude, if I can't figure this out, how's my fucking mom and dad going to understand this? You know? So, um, and even he was like, yeah, dude, like, it feels like I have the same phone, but then there's this extra thing on the side that I never use. Yeah, that's, what was his last one? The whatever, the 15? L literally the 15. Yeah, that's, you're buying the same phone. Yeah. That's why, it's, but, uh, that's why intuitively for me, it, it makes sense to not do a new phone every year because it's never a new phone. But I just, I don't know how that comes up in the money. You have the 15? I have the 15 Pro Max. Okay. Yeah. I have the 13. Damn. Okay. Glenn over here. <laughs> Dick Glenn, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I've been brokering <laughs> NIL deals for freaking oh Kendrick Oh, my Bergen. God. <laughs> Mr. Shiny iPhone. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I, Mr. I, I, A12 chip over here. I don't know what <laughs> chip it has. But... I run my iPhone to the ground. Do you have the feature where if you have like a bunch of text messages... It summarizes it for you. You I don't? Because I think that one is actually out. I don't have it because my phone's old, but I just got like bombarded with text messages in the group chat. And I'm just like, bro, I wish I had that feature hmm. so I wouldn't have to read all it this shit. It might just be group chats. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like I saw that, but um, yeah. I've also seen a few buggy things from Apple products lately. I did an Apple Music text and iMessage, and it, it was one of my songs and it showed up as the like uploaded file which is a pretty big freaking bug um, yeah there's definitely some bugs in ios 18 i've noticed a few search for some reason still sucks search spotlight search on the iphone when you like scroll down when you just like pull down pull down and just search for shit um like it works but then like when i need like for some reason, I can't search for a contact. So if like I want to text you, I can't just search like Ricker, hmm. unless let me see. Rick, oh, yeah, that definitely works for me. Yeah, that's working right now. It was something else. It was something similar to that web search or something. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do like that they added. Um, it looks like fucking searching in iMessage has gotten better. Hmm. So like you could be like, because one thing I do now quite a bit is like if I go to someone's house and I forgot the code for the apartment. I just type in code in their name and then their fucking the thing will come up when they texted it to me. Cause if you just type in code, I'll get like fucking Google yeah. auth authorization bullshit. And that wasn't in iOS 17. Cause I remember. Yeah, I've never tried putting name I, after it. It is a very good feature though. Yeah, that shit. I've discovered a lot over. That's why I don't really like deleting text messages. That's probably how they upsell people for space. And all that shit locked also, like, that brings me to this other thought, is, like, when Apple intelligence is, like, Sick. fully out, it could be, pro it will, it, not could, it will be the most useful AI for consumers because it already has the data set that you've been building for the past decade, which is your Apple account yep. and the yep. shit on your phone. So be a, be a good Siri and I'll love it. I will love it. I was in a Verizon store and I was like, do these phones have Apple intelligence yet? And it's not out, is it? I don't believe so. Zoinks. Dude, Verizon I... stores are absolutely useless. It's just, I don't phone... even know how they, it's a phone selling store. Do you fucking anything Verizon wise? Apple has, um, abstracted out pretty well. The carriers, um, because now you don't need a fucking SIM card to upgrade your phone because it was like digital i'm not sure how it does it but like there's like a thing where it's like move your phone number to the new phone yeah but like you would think that's a thing that only verizon could do but somehow apple was like yo this is too cumbersome <laughs> for the consumer we'll, we'll just do it that. for you yeah so i don't know how they're doing it it is know? it's I, i'm i'm sure a cell service wouldn't be a, a good vertical to integrate but it's pretty annoying when you yeah. Stuff. What? That's why I so, made Mark Cuban's cell service, like he did for health. Oh yeah, or fucking um. Never mind. I guess they just use AT and T's towers. But I feel like there's another thing I wish Apple would do that they would just like take care of. That like, well, I want to say healthcare, but it might not be healthcare. Like, like healthcare would be cool. What I always wanted, and I wrote a piece on this called uh, Hack My ha Happy Chemicals, which I still think they'll do eventually, especially if they get into to more health-integrated stuff. 
is like if you have a goal and you want to be like freaking a master investor you want to probably more specifically and, and realistically if you want to meet some weight loss goals you plug in everything and it, it shows you your track tracks what you eat tracks what you do um but what i was kind of wanting was like even socially if like you interact with <laughs> if you interact with someone and they're a drag and it like it lowers whatever hormones in your brain and it makes you like more depressed or something and that correlated with like bad eating habits it like tells you all these things to see like okay this is how you could up your like non-depression chemicals and make you like happier and more willing and able to achieve a goal i i see what you're saying Mm -hmm. i feel like they kind of already have that but it probably sucks they have like fucking bullshits for the apple watch or these rings that like yeah you know but like even like get like brain chemical integration like neural link depth yeah yeah you know? it, i think i started it off talking about neural link and the and little microchips but uh yeah eventually I'm, I'm sure you can grab some brain chemicals through iv or something i don't know maybe maybe you go and maybe you have to get integrate with a an actual physical healthcare provider or uh go in one of those black uh black mirror domes that there's youtube shorts about it's gonna be so fucking trippy to like look at your phone or whatever you look at to see your neural link shit and just see a, a ui which is probably going to be beautiful uh and just see like your fucking brain stats um the yeah fuck but yeah precisely um that is like definition of singularity right like we're in it for that i guess like, so i don't know about then the like what if the fucking app crashes do i die yeah. <laughs> like yikes in one of uh my old music videos there was a magazine cover of uh are you still you when your brain's uploaded to the cloud or whatever mm -hmm. look up that magazine but yeah that, i mean that's pretty objectively a good service to know of like how your brain chemicals work just like how you know your steps i don't want it as invasive as a lot of people probably are marketing it to be as a product but like, tell me what lowers what. There will probably be... Oh, and fucking another good example of Apple abstraction is, like, you'll go into fucking settings, iOS settings, go to the fucking Neuralink app and be like, okay, I don't want it to have access to my memories. I don't want it to, to access oh, to God. my fucking fetishes. <laughs> I, I, I do want it to have access to fucking... I don't know, fucking, like, fucking bullshit. And you just fucking mark it down. And then... Some company is going to come out or some leak is going to come out. Oh, so-and-so yeah. just accidentally had a data breach. 13 yeah. million people's brain fucking data things was just hacked by someone in China. Yeah. That's going to be fucking Cybersecurity crazy. is uh, on the forefront of being the most important thing. Already is, but. It's going to be fucking People's weird. cash registers down at the same time as AT&T right before a hurricane. Cash registers are down. Yeah, it's, right after the the cell services went down, same thing with my Verizon service. There's people who were affected with. It might have just been cell service, but some retail stores were had to do cash only. Oh no, not cash only. Card or something. Might have been like it. not cash, but the square the square terminal's not working. Yeah. Shit. There was a shout out the Compound and Friends podcast. There was a really cool. Uh, episode where they had an analyst that does uh like payment services research he talked about afterpay and paypal and venmo and x.com pay services it was one of my recommendations of the day glenn's rex Dude, glenn's rex bro big dick glenn bro. <laughs> bdg <laughs> you know what they called me back at u of a dude, dude but i also want to say this uh as sports picks back up again there was a um, college game day ESPN does where they, they take, um, they go to a city that college football happens. Do you know Pat McAfee or no? No. Uh, um, but Pat McAfee is a punter that, back in the day, he was a punter. And now he does 
talk talk show stuff and he's very funny very nice and um they took college game day and they went to berkeley for the first time for a cal game and it was very funny cal recently changed conferences and used to be the pac-12 are you aware from your u of a days pac-12 no not even a little oh really (laughs) yeah uh did not know (laughs) there's conferences for sports for every university and everybody basically left the Pac-12 and went to other places that are more like Southern teams. So Cal faces like Miami now. They're lit- they're literally in a conference that's called the Atlantic Coast Conference and they're, the- they're on the other side. But they go to the, this game day show goes to, to universities and uh, all the students and people get riled up for like a early morning freaking party sesh. And they went to Cal and it was freaking banging. And that's uh, my second Glenn's Rex. Berkeley is banging. So if they they might go to Tucson, and I'm definitely gonna go to a Tucson game day. Dude, let me know. I'll go too. There's no other reason to go. Yeah, let's go. And if anybody asks, we're grad students. Um, oh, dude, lawyers studying neuroscience. Oh, sick. I'll wear yeah. glasses. Yeah. So like, let's oh, go to one of those dude. bars and you know just chop it up. And... Have a tweed jacket. Yeah, definitely. Just oh, be so like, oh, definitely got to slide in the. Oh, I can't stay long. I got to go home and grade papers. <laughs> you know, one of one of those things. So is ChatGPT helping you out with the paper? I mean, yeah, they you can get the outline, but it, it's really you know up in the old noggin. <laughs> Professor Glenn, what are you doing out here? Oh, you kids. Oh, you you don't have to buy me a beer. Like uh, six beers, sure, dude. Fuck it. Um, I didn't even drink yeah. a beer I like that. There. I'm so down to go to Tucson. <laughs> I'll I'll look for it. I mean, I doubt there's any concerts, but I I doubt there's anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm almost positive that one of these years they'll they'll do a the U of A game day, because uh, they also switch conferences. Remind me to go to Chiba Hut while I'm out there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, and the Chiba Hut was fucking amazing. Their punch was solid. <laughs> it's probably not there anymore. Fuck, dude. I might Weed even buy there? it. Weed? Yeah, still. I believe so goodness i might even buy a day pass for the wreck well definitely definitely gotta do that dude yeah go see what's up there swim it freaking. get a nice little workout in freaking little ball sesh mm-hmm. oh fuck little run around the track Oof. Right, i'll do a track dude i'll do a mile i run i've ran in a long time tesla <laughs> uh, tesla that's the robo taxi as the the website with the algorithm that makes clips tesla robo taxi tesla had an event called we robot or it's about to happen i'm not sure one of the two uh, company's vision for autonomous driving fully operational robo taxi is unlikely to be revealed one of the analysts uh says it's showcasing its latest full self-driving software and potentially a cyber cab in a controlled environment. Potentially introduce a dual approach to autonomous ride sharing with both fully autonomous robo taxis and a supervised FSD full soul, full self-driving ride share service. So far, robo taxi concept envisions fully autonomous vehicles without steering wheels or pedals designed for ride hailing and delivery services. The software allows limited autonomous functions with human supervision, and the company aims to eventually offer completely driverless ride sharing. So, potentially an Uber versus Tesla robo taxi thing going on. Also, a DoorDash partnership potentiality. Uh, rumors of a robo delivery partnership between Tesla and DoorDash, probably to undercut Uber even more. That would be sick. Um, in the perfect world, mm-hmm. you own a you own a Tesla. You want to make some cash. You send it out to go do rides for you, and you just chill. Right. Like the and then it just comes back, and you charge it. Right, right, right. Perfect world. And I do think Tesla will get there eventually, but Elon Musk, for like the past five, six, maybe seven years has been saying it's coming next year it's coming next year it's coming so this is just him doing it again um i think yeah 
Some more analysts predict Tesla will unveil the CyberCab and potentially provide a sneak peek of a new, more affordable model slated for production next year. Um, some analysts are bullish on the price target. The Cybertruck is doing... I thought it was going to be popular, but I'm seeing a lot of fucking Cybertrucks in LA. Like, way more than I expected. Yeah. Um, it's definitely, like... I feel like Tesla, like the regular Teslas, used to kind of be a luxury item of sorts, and now, you like, every other three cars is a Tesla, so it's kind of just a normal car now. But a Cybertruck, even though it looks weird... Like my first thought is, what does it's that person luxury. do? Yeah. And and I love it when it's like it's usually fuck fucking people my age and they like fucking like I look at them and I'm just like okay you f are fucking a drop shipper or some shit or yeah. like really? something like that I can tell you have been fucking popping TikTok, um, but I don't know it just looks fucking cool. It won't look cool in a few years, but I right absolutely now, dislike how it looks. Really, I want to go inside one. I've been. I'm sure much. inside's cooler. Yeah. But I dislike the outside. Really? Oh, man. I saw the white one. I was like, bro. The different colors, a little better. I wonder who's making all that money from the um, wrapping these things. Yeah. Is it not a Tesla service? I don't believe so. I think it only comes in one color. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure that's done expertly. And yeah. The plastic Someone's that are on Tesla cars are all not screwed up all the time. They're probably ch charging a premium for that. Um, but yeah, no, robo-taxis, that would be cool. Um, if I were a Tesla shareholder right now, which I'm not. I got out. Yeah, it's too much for me. I would, yeah, I would be, I don't know. Not, I would be not like, the price, the volatility was too much. I was getting annoyed. Also, yeah. looking bad right now. What's looking bad? The stock. Is that like 2021 prices? I really wish that um, Elon would step aside. Everybody and, knows. But also... He's a little I bit feel, somewhat of the pricing. A little bit. Yeah, but I don't really care about that because like, then it would just go back to what its true price should be, which is fucking probably a lot lower. But um, I feel like another CEO just wouldn't be like able to push Tesla to like innovate. I don't think it's as, that valuable. Again, you don't? I mean, I think it's like 40 V's. How much? Like, first of all, it's an automotive industry. Even if, you know, Kathy and everybody says it's data, which might be why it's outpriced other EV stuff. But I mean, well, the EV thing, I agree with you on because EVs have definitely underperformed yeah. in terms of like sales and popularity. And there's also but... just auto. Auto's never that fun to purchase as a stock in yeah auto sucks but it's like like fucking elon said like the the value is the fucking the self-driving you know he says yeah. he doesn't even say it's a car company now he just says it's an ai company which yeah. is why i would be pissed off as a shareholder i'd be like yo i'm trying to invest in a car company here but if he were to like step aside and be like replaced with somebody else like i just think they would focus on cars and maybe even not that hard on self-driving and last night I was in my homie's Tesla, which was self-driving. And I was like, dude, this is fucking incredible. I was a little scared. I was a little scared. Yeah. But I was also like, because like I've also been in Waymos and their cameras and their sensors are like way bigger. So I was like a little more at ease there. And like Tesla's are like super tiny, almost invisible. But I'm also like thinking like, yo, I, I hate Tesla has. Bridge. Oh yeah. I bet Tesla has that's fucking like. I don't know if they have more data than Google. Probably not, but they have like a lot. So it's not like this is some startup that's like just tinkering with this shit. Yeah. But I don't know. We'll see if this robo taxi thing like is real, then I don't know. It's like owning taxis, but boy, I forget what my first purchase of Tesla was. It had to be between 18 and 20, probably maybe before 18. That was the price to get in. And I was in. I think probably some of the twenties as well, because I remember, yeah, I remember it dipping back to my like uh, initial um, price point of getting in in like twenty three, which is probably around the one hundreds. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably bought more in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. They're also building that humanoid robot too. Yeah, I mean, and... they're being Starlink, you know. 
Oh yeah, that sh- that should be in Starlink. And also the fucking um as a stock, I'm saying Starlink. Oh yeah, I wish. And also um he wants to like what did he say? He wants to s- use a shit ton of capital from Tesla to fund his AI efforts. LLM efforts. Yeah, yeah. You always uh, probably got to see uh, what a uh, he's not a founder, but a, but a executive is doing, especially if they have multiple companies of how <laughs> what capital from which company is going where and what they're actually trying to do. Remember back yes. in, uh, at a freaking I know it's not called O'Malley's, but that Irish bar in L.A. And uh, in Tucson? No, no, in L.A. When I was there, oh, um, it's, you go Casey's, and it's next to one tower, one or whatever. Casey's, sure. Did uh, I take you there? Yeah, I was there with you and Miles, and Twitter had just turned to X. Oh, we're chilling with those Australians. No. Oh, um, fuck! What was I gonna ask you? It was about that. Twitter Shit. had uh, just turned to X, and I was like. uh uh, I was super confident X would be on like the little icons and stuff because I think it was on maybe one of the s- laminated squares for the, the bar. Uh, I was like, yeah, absolutely. X will take over in like about four weeks. But, um, and I and I used little salt peppers to see like Musk's assets and probably what he thinks he wants to do and what he owns, what it's for. Uh, so you got to see, I'm, I'm sure all these companies for him are kind of just capital flows and that he really cares about Starlink and spaceships and that like robo taxis is part of the digging of the tunnels and stuff yeah yeah well I at first I think he wanted to I think his like uh, motivation was to save the planet you know fucking climate shit and then he was like oh wait I fucking love autonomous vehicles and I also have a car company let's add that in there you know? Yeah, it's like it's a bit frivolous sometimes. So that's why I'm saying you got to look at what what what's the uh, what's the vision here, eh? Um, if I were to guess, I think the overall vision is multiplanetary human life. Yeah, spaceships and the satellites is probably one of the profitable businesses that are part of the spaceship stuff. God, I wish I could invest in SpaceX. Saying that as if I have a lot of money to invest in SpaceX, <laughs> that would actually make an impact. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you always see those charts of what ten thousand or one thousand invested in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I can imply I could buy an employee coffee. That's how I can invest into SpaceX. That could you fractionalize employee stock options to other people? A little bit I don't of security know. selling, but. I'm sure there's some rules around that. Oh, I'm sure there's some SEC. Sure, Uh, investing things in there. Four minutes left. Left. What industries do you think are the most stressed out managers? Most stressed out managers? Yeah. Um, I would say like anything surrounding like super high risk cybersecurity, where you have like a lot of sensitive data. That a lot of bad people are trying to get their hands on. Okay. Banking, yeah. fucking healthcare, finance shit. I mean, that's banking, but okay, okay. This uh this is a LinkedIn news chart and it's prefaced by saying my managers quotes, my managers are often too stressed to help me out or support me. And the, the uh percentage is percentage of workers who agree. And the top three sectors are oil, gas, and mining. Mm-hmm. Second is retail, third is construction, and tech is about seventh. Oil, gas, and mining? Yeah. I can imagine that your <laughs> fucking manager is too stressed out. They're probably then, covered in oil. <laughs> right under that, right above construction of making buildings that people have to be in and that I go very high is retail. <laughs> I mean, have you been to a fucking American Apparel? Have you it's... been to Cheddar's, dude? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen how hard it is to fold clothes well i I did see someone with a, a machine that can fold clothes which is you know maybe worth the investment that's crazy as a sources linkedin market research two minutes left uh 
what are... Padres daughters suck ass, dude. Uh that's not well, the word on the street last night. Uh doesn't matter. Final game of the series to go on to the semifinals is tomorrow in LA next to a dirty river. And the Padres are gonna freaking smash it out, dude. The river is I dirty. Really Dodgers, dude. Dodgers yeah. suck. Dodgers yeah. fans are even worse, dude. Okay, I don't, I'm not a baseball guy, but as a lover of LA, I'm gonna have to call out your disrespect because San Diego isn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> like, guy, trapped okay, you got sport that he doesn't know about. <laughs> okay, you got a beach, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a beach too, we got father. dirty beaches, dude. Yeah, well, you <laughs> <laughs> have worse Mexican food. No, that's just not true. You got a freaking a, a bunch of little freaking hot fry Latinos, dude. Latinas and uh freaking heavy shorted freaking foos up there and they're throwing stuff onto the field, man. It's uncool. Yeah, dude. Stuck, bro. You ever watch a movie, bro? That's from LA, bro. <laughs> Nothing to do with the Dodgers at all. Oh um, yeah, I don't stuck. know much about the Dodgers. Um what are you reading? What are you watching? What is to end off the episode that you recommend? Oh, Glenn's Rex. Um, Glenn's Rex. Currently reading a book by Oppenheimer. Oh fuck. Twenty twenty. I forgot his first name, but it's called The Long Goodbye. B U Y. Um, Sounds romantic. God, yeah, it's about pretty fun <laughs> fundamental cycles and statistics of the stock market. Really romantic. Uh, really cool. There's another one, but I forget what it is, but I recommend it. What's your Glenn's Rex? Glenn's Rex, my big dick Glenn's Rex. Um, I think I mentioned it last week. Just finished Super Pumped, the story of Uber. Um, super interesting if you like super dramatic tech founder stories. Uh, read that because it's a roller coaster. It's like fucking uh, Wolf Wall Street kind of. Recurring Bond, man. There's your Rex for the day. Instagram Recurring Bond. Finally got a few viral posts. Nice. Not a bad, but that's always been the motto. Ah. Uh, Peace. Peace.